All right, hello, and welcome back to Space Quest 6. We're still trapped here in this hole, so let's see what we can do about getting out. You'd think, if indeed you did, that a guy with the skin quality of a pachyderm wouldn't have a problem with this climate. Um, I'm going to try to kind of balance going through a, a lot of the jokes in the game with not taking an overly long time to look at everything. Rats, the cinema appears to be closed. You were really hoping to see Tango and Cash 27. The advertised movie will change pretty much every time we're on the screen, so you can keep an eye out for that. Zorbot the Greek. Um, probably a reference to something, but I'll tell you I don't recognize that one. That's an interesting piece of hardware. Your normally dim power of recollection actually recalls having seen a picture of one of these in the ship library. Get this. It's called a bike. People used to actually get on these and use their own muscles to achieve locomotion. What losers. Upon closer inspection, you notice some sort of ID card hanging on the frame. Mm -hmm. um, let's see, I think we can try and do this. Use our mouth on the ground. You get a jump on senility by mumbling to yourself. Your utterances fall on uninterested oral organs. I thought we could, I guess not. You get a jump on No. Oh well. Um, Alright, so what we actually need to do is bizarrely easy in a way. Um, it's difficult because you don't necessarily think of it normally in a game like this, but you just gotta grab onto this guy as he walks by. You'd think the solution would be a little more complex, but not really. Eh, it'll pluck you out. Thank you, my good man. <laughs> um, Guys, I, I hope everything came out with me. Well, let's take a look. What do we got? We have one Buckazoid. That's your current Buckazoid collection. And of course, we have... It's your trusty whisk broom and dust pan. Very good. All right. We can try to talk to this guy. It's not going to go inside, well. Inside, he chuckles to himself with the thought that you think he might actually care what you have to say. All right, let's move on. Um, so we're going to start... Wow, there we go. I'm going to start by trying to find something uh, that will appear randomly. And luckily, it's here right in the beginning. It's one of those new Kodrak mobile photo boots. I heard they were beta testing those. This costs a buckazoid to use, and I think that's a good use of our only dollar right now. You pop a coin in the slot and climb on in. All right, I'm looking pretty good. Fire away. <laughs> this guy very politely waiting his turn. I appreciate that. There's got to be an optics problem with that machine. I, I look uh, partially digested. <laughs> Speaking of which, couldn't quite make it out, but there's a little eyeball opening and closing on the back side of this. Good thing you didn't opt for that second set of prints after all. Guess that guy won't be filing any complaints with the Portable Business Association. I guess that was a very hungry machine. Um, take a look over here. Hmm. Those two look like people my mom warned me about. I think I should avoid them. And indeed, while Roger will not speak to them. Um, in plants and stuff, we will save for later. We don't need to go there yet. We also don't actually need to go in here in the Dew Beam Inn. Uh, but I want to stop in just to essentially uh, show off our primary goal in being here. At least at this point. Let's see this kind of... Uh, goo-like alien heading up to its room. Let's, we can walk over here to the main part of the screen. Look around at a couple of things, these Those guys. Are some interesting looking dudes. Must be a couple of real losers since they seem to be dateless. Of course, that won't be a problem for you once word gets around that you've hit the planet. Can you believe he actually thinks that? <laughs> That's the manager of this little slice of heaven. He looks like he's an expert on energy conservation. Mainly his. Alright, let's have a chat. 
He seems to be ignoring you. Uh, excuse me. I'd like a room, please. Really? I mean, uh, <clears throat> really? Well, uh, I think we've got one or two for a couple of hundred bucks is always a nine. In advance, you understand. I believe I have a prepaid reservation provided me by Starcon. I got no reservations from any Starcon. I got no reservations, period. I do a cash business. You want a room? Call it the Buckazoids. So that's, um, 200. Well, okay. 200? Don't you listen, son. I said 300. That's 300 a night. And I don't include any weird pets. Them's extra. I could have sworn you said... You calling me a liar? I don't need no guff from the likes of you. This is the finest lodging on the planet, son. If you don't like the prices, you can just take your sorry pinkish carcass out of here. Well, uh, 300? Okay, uh, but give me your finest room then. The finest room. Yeah, right. <laughs> you got it, buckaroo. Best in the house. <laughs> Coming right up. Pay up, and we're in business. Um, all right, so I guess we got to find ourselves 300 buckazoids. We're currently sitting on a uh, dustpan and brush. Uh, you see this guy, you know, making use of the uh, wall there. Now we're gonna head up this way, hopefully encounter another individual wandering around. We could check out the arcade. I'm gonna wait on that. Let's head down here. Back up. There he is. At least I think that's him. Yeah, maybe not actually. Let's see what this guy says. It's one of those Bjorn guys. <laughs> it's so cute when they talk about assimilating everyone. I think that's supposed to be the Borg, but... This guy looks like he should be standing watch around one of those barrels. He has a bit of a nervous look about him. Let's try to chat with that guy. He'll come back out. There we go. Hey! Uh, I wonder if you... Nah, what was I thinking? Another guy we have to talk to twice. He's too far away or doesn't care. Well, let's give him a chance to come back over. Here we go. He's too far away. Hey! <laughs> Same opening? Uh, buddy, maybe you can help me out. I'm trying to track down this Ender Droid. I'm an Ender Droid runner. I know it don't look so hot, but I'm in disguise, you know? In disguise? Yeah, you do look disguised. I just don't know what like. Hey, here's a tip. Think seriously about a flea dip. I could really use your help getting this one. I've had a hell of a time tracking him down. You've got to help me. Tell you what, if you can find and immobilize this bionic beer opener, it's worth 50 buckazoids to you. What do you say to that? I'm Less than a night's stay. I haven't seen synthetic hide in a hair of him. All that's left to check is that bar. I'd go in there myself, you see, but I've had a little misunderstanding with the management. No biggie. I'm sure it'll blow over soon. Anyway, can you help me out? What do you say? Fifty buckazoids. And if you don't mind me saying it, you look like you could use it. So how about it? Well, I don't know. What's this Indodroid thing look like? And why do you want it? Well, he's about your height, only maybe a few inches higher. And I'd say about your weight, give or take 60 pounds or so. But then that's just probably because of that stuff he's made of. Kind of a liquid metal thing, but that's not important. He's got a crew cut, and I think he was wearing a long, dark coat. Has a strange accent. But why do you want him? Oh, he made some people mad. How? It's a very drawn out explanation. Out of his program and kind of killed and or mangled a score or so of coworkers and more importantly management personnel. A big no no. 
No big deal. I just got to take him in for analysis and processing. It could help pull me out of my uh, unfortunate cash flow situation. And most importantly, it can mean 50 buckazoids for you. What do you say? Well, I could use the buckazoids. I'll see what I can do. Great. You won't regret it. You're going to need this data quarter. It's been modified to only be sensitive to certain unique components like droidium, something only an endrodroid would be composed of. This will help you root him out. Good luck. Uh, I mean, uh, let me know when you've got him. Thanks. I gotta go check in with the home office. I'll check back out here a little later to see how you're coming along. All right. Uh, let's talk to the bouncer here. I don't think we actually have to talk to him, but just curious if he says anything. Uh, Mr. Bouncer? He pays very little attention. You're pretty used to it. But someday. <laughs> All right, let's head into the bar. Uh, now, what we have to do here gets a little Once convoluted. Again, Vice is a bit more profitable than most business ventures. This place is almost too hip for the planet. But then that's no mean feat, given what a total heap this place appears to be. Yeah, what we end up having to do here gets pretty convoluted. We'll look at a couple of things just to help uh, <clears throat> get you know, Roger's mind in the right space. An interesting arrangement of conduits creates an almost artistic pattern to the back bar area. It's hard to tell what is merely decorative and what is functional. Hmm, there's a small valve on this conduit. <laughs> the refrigeration unit blends well with the design scheme. Oh, that's nice. Hey, when did you start knowing things like that? Let's see if we can use this thing at all that that guy gave us to try and find the droid. It would appear that merging those two I <laughs> It would appear that... Yeah, it doesn't seem to really do anything too useful for us, but it's alright. We're just gonna search through the bar a little bit. Let's see, there's an elevator upstairs. Line to the restroom doesn't seem to be getting any shorter. And then we have this door back here. Well, that wasn't too bad for a borderline physical specimen like you. It didn't quite get the job done, though. Let's look at the door first before we you kick any more. wonder where that goes. I do. Let's try to find out. Nah, you still haven't convinced the door to yield to your obviously superior physical presence. There we go. Wow, you really did it. Not exactly the subtlest of entry techniques, but effective. <laughs> That's pretty macho for the likes of you. Who would have guessed you'd have the makings of a Starsky or a Hutch, or a Tango or a Cash? So if we can head down here. There's not a lot for us to do right now, though. You go now, and I don't rearrange your organs. We don't leave too soon. He's not going to be you happy with us. Way to the not so spiffy basement of the nightclub. Numerous stock items are stored down here. We see this guy at all? The endodroid, and he's repairing himself. <laughs> Yuck! I'd like to get closer and see, but I think that it uh, doesn't go well for us. Um, actually, you know what? Oh, I waited too long. Yeah, that's a great improvement. Look much better now. I wish we weren't behind this fight. Well, he did warn you. <laughs> I'm not going to say he told you so, but he did. Um, <laughs> I was actually thinking about letting that happen, but it wasn't planning on having it not be visible. Um, hang on a sec. Let's get back where we were. All right. Um, let's show this. We'll come over here so we can get a little better view of the endo droid. And we'll watch our cells get kind of squished. We'll also notice that there's these conduits up here. These two just happen to be open, unlike the rest of them. There we go. Basically, just pulls us inside out. Pretty unique. All right, hang on. All right, so we've seen that. We can actually grab this little metal bar quickly if we want, and then let's get out of here. Um, it occurs to me, I don't. I don't remember whether or not I got this um, earlier. Um, so, 
Remember this ID card that we saw on the bike, so we'll just grab that. Upon grabbing the ID card, you notice the picture on it is of a rather homely-looking alien type. Yes, everyone can't be as fortunate as you. Let's take a look at that. It's the alien ID you snagged from that rusty bike. That's a fairly hideous picture of the former owner. It makes the average Department of Motor Vehicles photographer look like Ansel Adams. Okay. It's the um, and then what we can actually do is take our picture. What was that supposed? To and put it on this badge instead. You quite cleverly, paste your picture over the old one on the ID card. Very nice. And we don't really need to for any reason, but we actually can. Um, you got to click this on yourself. That's how you use it. You can turn it on. This button turns the data. And it's not going to do anything, but now it'll search for Droidim, I guess. Whatever. Um, doesn't actually change anything, so we don't need to. But that is done. Let's go back to the bar. And we're going to do a couple more things here. Let's. Yeah, let's start by going upstairs. And let's see what we see. If we look around. How trendy. Cargo ship grating seems to have been used in an artsy fashion to create flooring for the log area. Hmm, it must be pretty interesting below when someone up here rejects whatever substances they may have consumed over the previous couple of hours. <laughs> See how these guys are doing? Wow, this sucker makes even you look like GQ material. These nitro suckers come in all types. They're all drawing on the hoses. Amazingly, they don't freeze. They just blaze over for a few moments while the others laugh. Yeah. This one has a tattoo which says, I love Lula. I just there, uh... The railings make a fair attempt at keeping... No, not the mid railing. As with some other tables, a there large tank marked liquid nitrogen sits beneath the center. That's the nitro suckers. Above. A set of hoses are within reach for each being which might be perched there. Let's see if they want to chat. You get a jump on senility. He, or whatever it is, emits what you think is a dim-witted guffaw. You rarely feel so conversationally superior. At least with animate objects. <laughs> you aren't certain, but it's quite possible you were invited to establish an inordinately close relationship with yourself. Perhaps I misunderstood. Alright, so yeah, they don't have a lot to say to us, but um, they don't seem to like security. So, uh, we can get them out of here so we can do what we need to do by showing off our badge. You hear them say, gee, our skimmers double hovered. We gotta run. Because I want access to this nitrogen canister as well as these hoses. You snag the four hoses. Never know when you're going to meet that special lady. And I think this is tough because you know it's not really highlighted anyway by being a different color or anything. But if you look over here, mm, this conduit seems to be unoccupied at the moment. Do have an open conduit? So we can grab this tank. Drag it over to here. Oops. Or not. There we go. We can't take it with us, but we can connect it to this conduit. The canister snaps neatly into the conduit opening. And that opens some doors for us. Also, while we're here, we can just untangle these hoses. Carefully untangle the twisted mass of hookah hoses, and then rehook the hoses to create one long hose. It reminds you of Christmas time back home when you enjoyed untangling the Christmas lights and saying to yourself, I get so much satisfaction from cleaning and straightening. One day, I'll be the best janitor ever. <laughs> well, at least one part of that dream came true. You are a janitor. You rehook the hoses to create one long one. All right. Now let's head back downstairs. And we're going to come over to the bar. So first we're just going to talk to him normally. Hey, what can I do for you there, fella? What have you got? Well, aside from the obvious stuff, which is glaring in your face from the back wall here, I do make some mixed drinks. I mean, uh, 
if I do say so myself, I make a pretty mean William Gibson and a pretty good ass him off cocktail, you know what I mean, huh? Hey, I got you. Try a fuzzy toe jam. They seem to be pretty popular with your particular uh, species here. I don't know that I'd want a fuzzy toe jam. Let's try an awesome off. Okay, you got it, pal. Um, we never really get anything, which is fine. However, uh, this is another guy that we actually want to show our badge to because that gets us some special service. Huh. So you're with Bali Sorbet Security, huh? Yeah, what can I get for you, Chief? Yeah, this pretty much just repeats most of the same dialogue, so we're going to skip his little section here. I got just the thing for you guys. If somebody don't even give the regulars here, what do you think, huh? I don't know if something got missed in the uh, um, kind of script of the game. Um, it just seems like all of that doesn't flow together perfectly. We're going to ask for the special. Make me a double uvula spritzer. Twist the fleck line, and I want it hacked and whipped, not like one of those shaken or stirred sissy drinks. Okay, coming right up, Chief. Uh, listen, this will take a couple of minutes, but uh, feast your eyes on the making of it, all right? Oh, that's just fine. Take your time, my good man. And if he's saying that he has, you know, some special drink that he only makes for certain people, then why are we ordering, you know, a special thing that just we want? I don't know. So we just want to steal this ice tray. And we're going to close this door. But we're not done back here. There's a few other things that we want to do. So one, we want to find which one of these, when this opened, one doesn't spew anything. Doesn't do anything. And then we're going to bend this open. With a flick of your very supple wrist, you pull the conduit loose from below the valve. Oops. And we want to connect it to the conduit that we had opened up above. The hookah hose is now attached to the leftmost conduit. And connect that down here. You complete the connection between the two conduits. And then relatively quickly, we want to head back upstairs. Because now that that is open, we can turn on the nitrous here. No, not you. Hey, buddy. Get your paws out of my tips or I'll liberate your favorite organ. I'll even let you choose. Or you can leave my tips alone and you won't have to worry about that decision. It's up to you. Um, all right, now we can actually do this. Nitro begins to flow through the tubing and... Oops, my bad. All right, so we're going to head down here now, and when we head into the basement this time, we will find that this guy has been frozen by the nitrous. Or... Frostalakista. Not nitrous, you know. Wow, it worked! This dude's in a deep freeze, but now what are you going to do with him? Well, there's a couple of things, but most importantly, we're going to take this metal pipe that we picked up over here. Crack him open. Cool. Laying a solid blow upside the head of this frigid felon has reduced him to cubes. Is not too hard to handle now. <laughs> and we're going to scoop him up with our dustpan. You quite cleverly whisk the cubed culprit into your dustpan. It's going to be tough to carry him this way, though. And then finally we're going to load him into the ice cube tray. Very good. He'll be much more transportable this way. However, you'd better hope it doesn't fall. Fair enough. And actually, I think we will end things here. Uh, we come back, we will finish stuff up here on Polystorbate 60 um, and uh, see what other kind of trouble Roger can get himself into. But till then, see ya.